Hi, my name is Ivan, and welcome to the RV Cooking Show, a place where I can share with you my passion for RVing and my love for recreating regional food specialties from all across the country right here in my RV. Today we're going to talk about Thanksgiving, and I'm going to share with you my mom's famous Thanksgiving cranberry sauce. Thanksgiving is a time for friends and family to gather around home and enjoy one another's company. Being a full-time RVer, you might say, hmm, well, where exactly is home for you, Evan? Well, home truly is where we park it. In fact, this is our eighth Thanksgiving full-time in our rig. We've spent Thanksgiving dinners in restaurants. We've gone to the RV Park Clubhouse for a Thanksgiving potluck. We've been activities directors and hosted a Thanksgiving potluck in the RV Clubhouse. But our favorite Thanksgiving is spent right here at home in our RV. Now, just like you, I cook a full Thanksgiving dinner. And I'll bet, just like you, I have a list. Turkey, gravy, stuffing. We have Aunt Lucy's stuffing. That's the one that we make every year. Wonder what you make. And do you call it filling or stuffing? Hmm. Cranberry sauce, sweet potatoes, white potatoes. We've got veggies, biscuits, and, of course, pie for dessert. When I make my Thanksgiving turkey, I don't use my oven, I use my crock pot. I typically buy a turkey breast. I put a little bit of chicken broth on the bottom, some white wine, some fresh herbs, some salt and pepper, and I cook it all day in my crock pot, and it smells amazing. Although last year I was at the grocery store and I saw a turkey, and it looked like it would fit. It looked kind of small, of course, like everything in the store looks. And when I got up Thanksgiving morning to put my turkey in the crock pot, just like everything, it was huge in my RV. I cut it up into pieces and cooked it just the same way I described, and it was delicious. But I would recommend a turkey breast, something that will fit in your crock pot. One of the things that we have every year is my mom's famous Thanksgiving cranberry sauce. It's delicious and I know because she wrote on the recipe delicious. You can tell it's a well-worn recipe too, but it's very easy. And even if you weren't a cranberry lover when we were kids and it came out of the can in that kind of gelatinous uh, cylinder, this is great and I think that you will enjoy it. It's simple. The things that we put in our mom's famous Thanksgiving cranberry sauce is a three ounce package of red jello. It can be cherry, it can be raspberry, it can be strawberry, whatever your favorite. We put in a can of cranberry sauce. It can be whole berry or regular cranberry sauce. We're going to use three quarters cups of a crushed pineapple with the juice. We've got one medium apple that we've diced about a third cup of chopped nuts, in my case I like walnuts, and we'll use about one cup of boiling water to dissolve the gelatin. So, I've got my recipe, I've got my ingredients ready, let me show you how we're going to make my mom's famous Thanksgiving cranberry sauce. I'm going to take my packet of gelatin, empty it right into my bowl, and up here I've got one cup of boiling water. I boil my water in the microwave. You can also do it on the stove top, but the key is make sure it is hot and boiling so it dissolves your gelatin. So in it goes right on top of the gelatin. Very good. I'm going to use my spoon and I'm going to stir it up. Make sure the gelatin dissolves completely. The next step is we're going to take our cranberry sauce. Here's the trick. You use a knife run it around the edge of the can and we're going to put just the entire can in my case I use a whole berry cranberry sauce right into the hot gelatin and I'm going to mush that up because the water is hot it's going to slightly melt the gelatin that's around the cranberries when we're finished with this we'll have a sweet tart delicious cranberry sauce I think you're going to like it okay once you have all of the gelatin crunched up, melted, and dissolved into your jello. What you're going to want to do is add the pineapple. Again, this is three quarters cups of crushed pineapple along with the juice. And many of you might say, well, if you put some pineapple in gelatin, it won't firm. But it will because of the gelatin that is in the cranberry sauce. So directly in there, excellent. Going to stir that up. 
adds a little color, a little brightness, a lot of flavor. Our next step is to put this into a bowl and chill it for about two hours until it firms just slightly. Be careful not to splash this on yourself, especially if you're wearing something light in color. Uh, this red jello does stain. And another tip for you as well, is if you get any on your counters, you want to make sure that you wipe it off right away. Otherwise, you'll wind up with pink spots on your counter. That's not very fun. So we've got our cranberry sauce, our red gelatin, and our pineapple all mixed together in our bowl. It's time to put it in the refrigerator so it can firm up for a couple hours so we can then add our apple and our nuts. Because I knew I'd be visiting with you today, I made a cranberry sauce earlier this morning, and I let it firm up about two hours, which is about the time it takes in my refrigerator to get semi-firm. So as you can see, if I tilted it all the way, it would pour out, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add apples and walnuts. The reason we let this firm for about two hours is because apples and walnuts are relatively heavy, and if we put them in when we first made the cranberry sauce, they would all float to the bottom. I've got some plastic covering my apples so they don't brown, and what we're going to do is we're going to add our apples that have been slightly diced. You want to peel them, you want to core them, and you want to dice them. And by the way, if you're not great with a paring knife, a vegetable peeler works wonderful for peeling your apples. Okay, just going to pick this up right in our jello. Wonderful. Got a third cup of walnuts. This is about two handfuls if you don't have a cup to measure them with. You want to break them up into relatively small pieces. So we're going to put that right on the top there. Excellent. We're going to take our spoon and we're going to stir it up, pushing the apples and the walnuts down, getting everything in there nice and even. Mm. As you can see, the gelatin isn't firm yet, which makes it easy for us to mix everything around, yet our apples and walnuts are not going to fall to the bottom and be in just one spot. As you can see, everything is mixed together nice. We've got apples and walnuts all throughout. It's still a little bit firm. We are ready to put the top on it, put it in the refrigerator, and that's all we have to do for it except enjoy it with our Thanksgiving dinner. Well, as you might have guessed, I knew we'd be making this today. So yesterday, I made a batch of my mom's famous Thanksgiving cranberry sauce so you could see what it looked like when it was finished and ready to eat. Here it is. It looks delicious. As you can see, it's nice and firm, just like a gelatin should be. We've got apples and walnuts, not only on the top, but all the way throughout the entire bowl. I like to serve it in this glass bowl. Besides the fact I think it's really beautiful, when dinner's over, it's really one less thing to clean up and put away. All I have to do is put the lid on it and pop it in the refrigerator. So that's it. That's my mom's famous Thanksgiving cranberry sauce. It really is delicious. Put it on your plate. It'll ooze and meld into everything. Sweet tart. Mm, absolutely delicious. Well, from our family here at the RV Cooking Show to yours, we wish you a joyous holiday season. Happy Thanksgiving. Visit us on www.rvcookingshow.com for this recipe or a great recipe for some easy sweet potatoes or drop me an email and we'll talk turkey. Thanks again. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you next time right here on the RV Cooking Show.